Hi there Chevy owners, today in your 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 1500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Red Arc's Tow Pro Liberty. We're also going to be using a plug and play cable that will plug directly into our Silverado here to get that module up and running quickly. And the biggest benefit of the Tow Pro Liberty is how hidden it is inside your vehicle. Unlike your typical brake controller that would be mounted here under the dash, you'd probably hit your knee on it every time you get in and out, you're having to mess with the settings all the time because you're always bumping it. The Tow Pro Elite's module is actually hidden behind our dash here, and this is the only thing that you're gonna see, and that has all of your controls that you would have on a normal brake controller right here on this tiny little knob. The module is located, again, hidden underneath, and we can mount that module in any orientation that we want, and that's what's cool about this system. A lot of the typical brake controllers that are proportional and inertia controlled like this, they have to be in a specific orientation here at a specific angle, uh, like a range of angles, in order for it to properly detect the inertia of the vehicle. With this module, again, you can put it in any orientation. There is a drive cycle that you'll have to perform to let the module kind of learn its location in the vehicle, but at that point, you get all the features that you would want from a regular brake controller without the large space. So if we go in a little bit closer, we'll show you how some of that works because it is a little bit different. For example, on your regular traditional brake controller, your manual slide is going to be just a button press now. So if we hit the button, that will be our output. And for our brake controller here, the amount of output is going to be based on the setting very similar to your regular brake controller the only real difference here is that it is full on full off versus with the slide you can go slightly in between as you need to but with this you could just turn the knob down if you wanted to lower the output that you're putting out with the manual press it's a proportional brake controller which means that it uses an inertia sensor to detect the movement of the vehicle so as you hit the brakes and it feels that's that kind of throwing forward motion it knows that hey that's that's my vehicle trying to stop. It can use that information to properly apply the brakes on your trailer to something that'll closely match your, your vehicle here based on the settings that you have to help give you a nice smooth brake application. This helps to prevent the wheels on your trailers from locking up. Uh, if they lock up, you actually lose your, some of your stopping force. It actually kind of speeds up in a way because you're not controlling how much it's slowing it down. You can flat spot your tires and it's just going to be a little bit more jarring experience than one that's going to be proportional and smooth with your vehicle. This controller will work with trailers up to two axles. So if you want to take some time with us here, we'll show you how to get it set up here on our Silverado and get a nice uh, small little button here on your dash that uh, kind of integrates pretty well and looks like it was something that was just supposed to be there. When you first open up your box, these are the components you're going to get with your Tow Pro Liberty. You'll get your module here, which we're going to mount remotely and hide it under the dash. You get your cable, which will allow you to plug into your module and remotely plug into our interface button here. And this is where we're actually going to be able to make our adjustments to our brake controller. So we'll be able to hide this on our dash and just have a really small button as the only imprint on like the large controllers that you normally have hanging under your dash. Now one of the things you do not get with this kit is this connector here. This is the connector that connects the module to your vehicle and powers it up and provides it with the brake signal. So you will have to purchase that separately, um, but here at eTrailer you can get custom made ones. So we're going to be using this one today. This is a separate part that you can get here at eTrailer and you can see the end here will plug directly into our module and it'll provide us with all the circuits that we need going to another connector that will plug directly into our vehicle so that way we don't have to do any wiring or anything really to get this installed. We just kind of plug it, plug it all in and we're good to go. So we're gonna start with this harness by getting access to where it goes and we'll get our module mounted up as well. So we're gonna set these guys aside for now and then we're gonna head inside underneath the dash on the driver's side. So we're under the dash here. This is the brake pedal. There's the parking brake pedal, your data link connector. We go straight back from the data link connector and you're gonna have this module cover here. This is our fuse box cover. We're gonna be using this for a couple of things. One, we're gonna mount our module right here onto the front of this cover. We're gonna pretty much put it right in this spot. We'll be drilling some holes to it and just using some cable ties to attach it. So that's where we're gonna place the module. We also need to get access behind here because this is where our harness is going to plug in. If you look at the cover, you'll see there's a picture of like a lock, an opening lock. You'll have three of those and there's arrows pointing to where the clips are that you'll need to use to release it. So there's two on the passenger side of it. 
The one on the driver's side here is really difficult to get your fingers in there and get to, so just follow the lock over to the latch, and then I just use a little hook tool to get underneath it to pop it out, because my fingers don't quite fit in between the components there. This will then just slide off out of our way. Again, we're gonna be mounting the module to it, so let me just go ahead and set that aside. We're gonna use that in a minute. So now we got that cover off. There's a large open connector here. Just above that, you'll see you have another open connector. It's a small one with just four pins on it. Our harness here is gonna plug directly into that. So we're gonna take this end here. You can see it's got uh, kind of some uh, slotted grooves. Those fit right into the slotted grooves there. So we're just gonna bring it right up here and then just push it in until it clicks. And that's how that's gonna go. Our cable is just gonna kinda, it's gonna end up poking out the top like that. And then we'll be able to plug into the side of our module here. We're just gonna set our module on here. I'm gonna try to line the lower edge up with kind of the curve here. That'll help me keep it straight. I'm also gonna slightly bias it towards the passenger side where the two clips are. Uh, that way when we plug in our large connector here, it will be a little bit further away because our parking brake pedal's on this side. We don't want to obstruct that uh, by placing our module here. And then I'm just going to make my marks here. Just using a paint stick. Black's probably not the best color, but we'll still be able to see it. And we're going to drill out those holes with a quarter inch drill bit so that way we can run our cable ties through. Our module will sit right on top of here, just like that, and then we can run our cable ties through to attach it. I'm going to start from the back side just because I like to hide the uh, head of the cable tie behind the paneling. It'll make it look a little bit nicer. So we'll just go from the back side here, push that through, and then bringing it up, pushing it back through. And then here on the inside, we'll run our cable tie down. And we're going to be running it down a little bit tighter than that here in just a minute, just kind of getting them started here. After you get it secured, you can snip these down. I did pull them quite a bit tighter to try to keep the module from being able to move around. You can see there we go. We're nice and secure in there, really secure to the module, or to the cover. So we can go ahead and click this guy back into place now and plug in our other end. So I'm just kind of pushing my wire up to just try to keep it in the direction that we want it to be in so we can plug it in. We can then slide our cover back up. and then clip it back into place. Our wiring here, we can then just push up there. We'll probably put a cable tie on it to ensure that the wiring stays where we want it to, and then we'll plug in our connector. So next we need to mount up our switch here. And I did kind of loosely assemble it. You have a knob, a nut, and a washer there. I just put them together so I won't lose them. The switch portion here, you can see the back has the same type of connector end as the module so this is the it's just like an ethernet style cable one's a 90 degree one's a straight so you can use that to your advantage because you can see how deep this is where the gray is the gray to and onward towards the knob is what's going to be sticking out the dash the rest of everything behind the gray here is going to be behind the dash when we drill our hole so you got to make sure you have enough room for about an inch and a half there for this switch Plus, once you plug a cable in, you're now at like two, maybe even three inches, depending on which one you choose to plug in there. So based on that, you wanna to try to find a place where you can mount it, where it's gonna be easily accessible. These panels down here are pretty thick. They're not the best accessible panel, but right here, next to, just to the left of the steering wheel, there's an opening right here that you can kind of see, you can feel if you wrap your hands around. 
And I think that's where we're going to mount ours right there. That way it'll be right in the driver's view, easy to see, kind of out of the way as well. To get to this point, to make it easier though to drill and install this, we are going to remove a panel. Uh, this lower panel right here. So we're going to get a T15 Torx to remove a couple fasteners located on the bottom. So there's just two fasteners. You have one to the right of your hood release lever there, and then just to the left of the data link connector right there. Both of them are going to be a T15 Torx. So just zip those on out of there. Once we've got both removed, this panel just pulls uh, away. There's a couple of clips there, 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 and there behind it. When you're pulling it away, you probably want to support the panel next to it that you're trying to pull it for, pull away from. So we got both of those popped out on that side. Then we'll head over to this side and we're gonna see if we're putting a little bit of support on the panel here as we pull away. After we've got that popped out, the hood release cable still attached to it, we can just set that down on the floor. We now have a lot more room to get our hand up in here, easily feel behind it. Uh, so we're good to go there. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab the drill that we're gonna need to get our switch installed. So we're gonna go ahead and take the knob off of there. Here's our nut. This is the size hole that we're gonna need to drill. So that way our nut can pass through. This is a 10 millimeter in size. So you're probably gonna be using standard drill bits. So the closest size to that is a 3 8 It's ever so slightly smaller, so you might have to step it up uh, just slightly from there if it's too tight to get this to fit. You'll also notice that on our gray tab here, there's a small hole there. We'll be using an eighth inch drill bit uh, to also line up that pilot hole for the light that's gonna shine through there. We're gonna start with the big hole and we can use our gray washer here kind of as a, uh, a guide for the other small hole. So we're gonna put it in this paneling right here. This kind of cutout you see in the steering wheel here, if you reach behind here, there, there is kind of a, a brace kind of right in that location. So you wanna make sure you're above this portion right there. So anything below that, there's a brace. And then if we go up too high, there's also a brace. So we need to make sure we're staying in between these two sections here. We got our drill bit. We're gonna, we're gonna put it about right there. So that's where I'm intending to put it. Before I drill, I'm gonna make sure, put my hand on the other side, try to touch my finger, make sure that that is a good spot. And that does appear to be a good spot right there. So we'll move our finger out of the way and we'll drill that on out. kind of an angle here, so we're gonna go a little slow so the bit can't walk away from where we're trying to drill. Because it is gonna to wanna to walk because of this angle. And actually, if we can, see if we can't move the steering wheel out of the way a little. One of the things I noticed is that there's some rubber behind it. Uh, I couldn't quite feel that there was rubber there. That's gonna make it extra thick and difficult for our switch to be able to pass all the way through. So we're gonna remove that rubber that's behind that there. To do that, this is pretty difficult to get to in this location. So we've already got our hole where we know we need it. Uh, so at this point, we're just gonna remove this piece. It actually comes out fairly easily. This top shell here pops off. Just kind of pull kind of upward on it. And that'll just pop right off of there. And then behind it, you're gonna have some seven millimeter fasteners you'll need to remove. There's a total of three of them that run around the piece. So after we got all three fasteners removed from up top there, we can then pop this panel out. I like to start kind of at the bottom, popping it down there. And then we can kind of work that away. And then we'll move over to this side. Same thing, I'll kind of start here at the bottom, pulling out. Once you get it loose, you'll need your key now because to get it all the way out of there, you're gonna have to turn it. Not enough to start it, just turn it forward, press the brake, and then you can pull it down into gear. Keep your foot on the brake, slide it up, and you can put it back into park. And now we've got that out of there. So when we look on the back side, you can see there's all that rubber. So we just need to cut some of that rubber out. And while we got it out here, we can also get our LED uh, 
little hole, pilot hole drilled a little bit easier. So we'll just take our razor knife and we're just kind of cutting around the hole. There we go, we can get some of that removed. And this will be a, a much flatter surface and it's also not as thick, so that way we can get our switch mounted into that. We did have to make another minor modification here. Um, when test fitting the switch here in the back, we were up just a little bit too high where the LED was gonna hit, so we did have to just kinda use our razor knife and notch out just a little piece of the plastic right there just to make sure we had a flat surface for that LED light. So now we can flip it back over to this side and we'll drill out our small hole. I'll use the nut as a kind of alignment tool. Just poke the nut in the hole that you drilled and then we can rotate the little LED to the top. I'm gonna probably spin the nut a little just because the shape of the nut is right where I want the LED. So we're just gonna spin it a little. There we go. And we'll give that a turn to where that's sitting upright. That looks like it's nice and upright from where our panel is there. So that's where we're gonna now use that as our pilot hole and drill out for our LED. If you don't have a bit that'll fit through the gray tab, you can go slightly bigger, but we don't wanna mess up our gray washer. So I'm just gonna stab it here. And then what you can do is after you've stabbed it through there, you now I gotta mark exactly where you need to drill. So if you do have one that's just a hair bigger or something, uh, you can go ahead and do that. And that way you won't mess up the gray uh, washer. Now we can get everything fully assembled at this point. So we'll take our switch. We're gonna line it up in the back, poke it through our hole. Then place our washer on top there. And then finally our nut will drop down in the middle and thread into our switch. And make sure that your washer does stay uh, lined up so that way the LED can shine through. And after you get it started and tightened by hand, these are actually fairly delicate pieces of metal here. They, uh, they can strip out really easily. So we're gonna use a 12 millimeter socket with no other tools. We're just gonna put the socket on there and we're just gonna snug it up by hand like that. Double check your button, make sure that it does press there on the end. And if that all looks good, we can go ahead and put the button on. So it clicks, so we wanna see that. To put, insert your button first, I like to just slide it up to it and turn fully counterclockwise to make sure that this piece here is turned all the way counterclockwise. Once it's fully counterclockwise, we're gonna line the zero up with our little hole that we had cut out there. So I'm just gonna line this up. There we go. We got our zero lined up with our mark. Turn it the other way, our 10 lines up with our mark. So that looks pretty good right there. So we can go ahead and reinsert this piece in the car now. I'm gonna plug the curved end in here. And then we can take our wire, we're gonna feed it next to the steering column. Aiming down, you should be able to reach underneath and pull it after you drop it in there. You gotta drop it a little bit further. All right, we got our wire. We'll just pull that on down. And we can reinsert our panel. You'll have to reinsert your key. And then with the shifter out of the way, you can kind of feed it back into position. There we go. And once you get it back in there, you can put it back in gear, take your key out. And then we're just gonna push it back into place and then we'll just reinstall our fasteners. And then after you get all your fasteners installed, your top piece, just line up the pegs. It should drop down just like that if they're all lined up. And then just kind of give it a little tap to snap those back in place. So next we're gonna go down below and that wire that we ran 
go ahead and cable tie that up. I went ahead and put one up here and then we took the entire bundle and kind of bundled it up there, making sure to leave myself enough excess to plug into the module. Now, I didn't want to plug it in just yet because our panel here that we've got removed, the parking brake cable kind of runs right by our module. And uh, I think it'll be easier for us to put the panel on and then determine if we want to plug in the module cable above or below this parking brake cable. So before we, uh, there we go. Looks like it's probably gonna work out pretty well just like that. So that's fine, we can snap our panel back in. Making sure to line up all the little push pins here before pushing it in place. There we go. And we're gonna put the fasteners back in, but before we do that, we might as well plug in our module here, make sure everything looks good, that we don't wanna reroute anything. And everything looks good. Our hood release cable went to the outside of our wiring right there. That all looks good. We'll just now take it around and plug it into our module. And that all looks good. So we'll reinstall our fasteners down here, and then we can verify that everything's working with this. All right, so now that you've got this installed, um, if you just press the button, you should see it pulse blue there, kind of breathe it and then die out. That'll show us that our module is hooked up, the module's responding, and it's telling us right now that that blue pulse is an indication saying that, hey, I don't see a trailer connected, you need to hook a trailer up. So we're gonna grab our test box and plug it up and we'll show you what it looks like once you've got a trailer plugged in. So we're plugging in our seven-way connector. This is for a test box that we have that'll simulate a trailer. That's what it looks like right here, it'll actually uh, draw a load on the system just like your trailer brakes will. So we'll hop back in the vehicle now. All right, and right away, as soon as we plugged in, you can see now it's lit up blue. And if we hit our button, it lights up red because it's sending out a signal and I can actually hear our test box is getting the signal. It's kind of quiet. You guys might not be able to hear it at home. And if you do have a trailer tester like we're using here, you should see the amperage go up when you press the manual slide. And as I turn the manual slide down, that amperage draw should be less. Now, we, before this is fully operational, we are gonna have to go for a test drive um, because the system here doesn't know the orientation that the module's in, and it needs to know that so that way the inertia sensor can properly detect the vehicle movement. So we're gonna hop in now, we're gonna just cruise around our parking lot here. It can take about 20 stops to get it to program, and you wanna try to be in a nice straight path when doing so. All right, so now we're gonna head out into the test course so we can get this to activate. Um, if we're looking at the switch, you can see it's blinking between green and blue. And that is an indication that it doesn't know its position yet. It needs to be calibrated. Once you get it calibrated, it should light up a solid blue. And during the process of calibration, it's gonna transition to being more blue as time goes on. So right now it probably has a little bit more green on time than it does blue on time. And that flash between the green and the blue is gonna slowly go to being more blue on time as it's progressing through its programming. So we're just gonna get up to maybe about 15 miles an hour, 15, 20, and then we're just gonna hit the brakes. We're gonna try to do this in a straight line. And again, it can take up to 20 times, but uh, if you get nice, good pathways, you can get it done in, in about five. It really just kind of depends on how, how well the module detects your movement. So we'll st we've done about three or four there. So we're just gonna stop real quick, take a look. And it still has a little bit of flashing, but we're mostly blue now. So we're almost there. A couple of more stops will probably put us right where we need to be. All right, so we did a couple of more and looking at it now, it is a nice solid blue. That's exactly what we wanna see. No more blinking on it. So if we uh, put my foot on the brake, you can see it's lighting up there when I have my foot on the brake. Takes it a second to, to kick in there. There's a little bit of a slight delay. And the color red there will change depending on the setting you have. The more red, the more output, the more blue, the less output. So everything looks good here. Um, at this point, we're ready to hook up our trailer and hit the road. We've got it all programmed. Now, we did plug in our tester so you can get that real-time feedback of it flashing. Uh, but you do not have to have a trailer plugged in when you're doing this. It'll program 
without having any kind of tester or trailer plugged in, you just won't get that blinking feedback that it's not programmed unless you have a trailer plugged in. Um, but if you were to do this, if you install it, you don't hook up your trailer, you just drive it around like normal, there's a good chance that the next time you go to hook up your trailer, it's already gonna be programmed from your normal driving. So this is really only a, kind of a necessary thing you need to get out there and drive it if you're gonna use your trailer right away. And that completes our installation of Red Arc's Tow Pro Liberty on our 2015 Chevrolet Silverado 1500.